Well, today the Supreme Court ruled on the APC governorship ticket in Aquaban State, and we shall be speaking to some of those seeking the state number one seat. Hello everyone, welcome to the program. This is Politics Today live on Channel Television. I'm Sean sure Kimale in Abuja. Let's tell you that the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has suspended the resident electoral commissioner, the REC in Sokoto State, Dr. Nura Ali, with immediate effect. The suspension was announced in a letter signed by the INEC secretary, uh, Ms. Rose Anthony, and addressed to both the resident electoral commissioner and the administrative secretary, in the state. According to the letter, Dr. Nura Ali has been directed to stay away from the commission's office in Sokoto State until further notice. While the reason for the suspension was not exactly uh, stated, it was gathered that the decision may be connected to the recent allegations of irregularities and the just concluded election in the state. Just as we've been dealing in the past few days, bringing to you some of the governorship candidates running for the offices, the different governorship offices across the state. We've done Lagos State, we've gone to River State. Tonight, we're speaking to two of the major candidates in Aquabum State, the candidate of the PDP and that of the APC. But on the, other flip, on the flip side is the Supreme Court judgment that was delivered today in relation to uh, the APC, the man that went to the court, uh, will also be speaking with us. These are some of the issues we'll be dealing with tonight on the program. But first and foremost, let's check out some of your political roundup stories. All right. Uh, just before then, uh, apologies for that mix up. We will. I'll be giving you the story on the Supreme Court, which uh, has affirmed uh, Kanemo Udafia as the authentic flag bearer of the APC. Uh, governorship ticket in Aquabum said as it dismissed the suit filed by Senator Ita Enang, seeking to nullify the primaries that produced Mr. Udafia. Delivering the judgment today, Justice Kudra at Kekere Ekun upheld the decision of the Court of Appeal Abuja, which held that the Federal High Court in Uyo acted without jurisdiction when it nullified the APC's primary election. The appellate court had upheld the primary election which produced a Kanema Rodolfia as a flag bearer of the party. The Supreme Court just dismissed uh, the appeal by Senator Ita Enangna and declared that the issues he raised, which borders on membership of political parties, and waiver is a domestic affair of the party. It was the basis upon which the court dismissed his appeal and affirmed the judgment of the lower court, that's the court of appeal. So by that, Akanimo is the candidate of the APC in River State, in uh, Akwaibom State. Yes, the APC governorship candidate in Akwaibom State is Akanimo Asupo Odofia. All right, then that is uh, what it's come out of the Supreme Court today. But of course, we'll be hearing for, from the APC and the PDP governorship candidate on their agenda, their manifesto, the plans that they have for the people of Aquabum State, why they should be elected uh, for the offices in which they're running for. All right, then, let's get to hear uh, tonight from the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Mr. Umo Eno, who joins us live from Uyo, the Aquabum State Capital. Thank you so much, Mr. Eno, for joining us tonight on the program. Let me begin by asking you, um, you and your counterparts uh, in this race, and one thing is on your mind to win the ticket. I mean, to, to win the race, to, to be the governor of Aquabum State. 
you are of the PDP. The PDP is a ruling party in Aquabom State. And of course, I know you and your friend, the incumbent governor, are looking to a situation where the PDP will retain the seat. But there's a whole lot at stake. Give us an understanding why you think you are the best man for the job. Hashem, it's, uh, thank you so much for having me on this program. And um, I bring to the table for the job of governor of Aquaibom State competence. From my background, capacity, I am coming from the private sector. And uh, the developments that we see in Aquaibom State right now has moved beyond the normal um, civil service um, states that you once knew. We have now moved. And we need someone to have a requisite background, requisite understanding to be able to drive um, the governorship of a Kwaibom state, to drive the economy, to drive uh, development, to grow the people. These are the things we need right now. Fantastic. Does look like a good way to start the conversation. But beyond that generalized concept of why you want to be governor, uh, there must be something that you think is very crucial for the people of Acquire Bumstead. Uh, I mean, it's critical for them to have their livelihood put well put together, they see their security, and the future of their children to be well secured. What could you be saying to them tonight that will give them that confidence that, look, this man who is running for office really has the idea in fixing this issue for us? So I have been into government, and I know the things that this government has done already, the foundation that has been laid, and all of the infrastructural development that has been put in place. And I understand how to f connect to those developments and bring in, create, I want to create a middle class economy for our people. We want to make sure that the middle class comes back again. We want to concentrate on rural development, which is going to help our people so as to stem the uh, rural urban drift and to ensure that the majority of our people living in the rural areas have um, a touch and a dividend of democracy. We need to connect between the rural area and the urban areas. We need to make that connect. And bring, I bring to the table that expertise, that ability to create jobs for our young people, that ability to continue on the trajectory of development, uh, of peace in Aquaibom State that we have enjoyed in the last seven and a half years. I bring to the table the competence to be able to expand on the things that we have on ground and to ensure that Aquaibom keeps going forward and never backward anymore. Now, uh, Aquaibom State is one state that is notable uh, for the agricultural potentials. Uh, the aquaculture, if, if you may put it in that, in that sense, is an oil-rich state also, which in itself uh, is a plus for the state, but it's been a curse uh, for most of uh, the oil-rich states in the Niger Delta region because of the um, ecological and the environmental uh, factors that have uh, bedeviled uh, development in that state. So we'll take it one after the other. What, in what way do you think you could make, for example, oil as one of the extracts from that state more beneficial to the people of Aquabom State, such that they know that oil is being processed in their backyard, but how much of that can they benefit? How, what would you do to ensure that the people of Aquabom State will, will, can boldly say, Yes, we are a true beneficiary of the oil money. Yeah, the, the oil itself is controlled by the federal government, even though oil is produced in Aquaibom State. And uh, think about 33 and a half percent of the oil of, uh, production comes from Aquaibom State. And so what we do is to ensure that we continue to use uh, money to pursue the growth of the people to ensure that we industrialize the state and continue to put in place infrastructure that will make our people 
continuously be on the map. You've seen the things that this past administration have done. We've done, Ibom Air is a classical example. We intend to continue to broaden the space for uh, investors to come in and you can see the new terminal building and we intend to progress to ensure that we can have a complete uh, warehouse terminal, cargo terminal that will help our people. Ibom Air has just ordered uh, about 10 new aircraft and when they begin to arrive, we'll begin to run um, the West Coast. These are all expansions. So as you get funding, you'll be able to keep pursuing those infrastructures that help our people and uh, in this region to grow. But we need to move away also from oil. That's the truth. And that's why if you look at our program, our which we tag the Arise Agenda, we have listed all the things we want to do, starting with agriculture. Aquaibom is blessed all year round by God. We have green vegetation everywhere. So we believe that we must settle into the agricultural revolution in commercial agriculture with our people, set up uh, um, farms, set up full value chain, where people will have the benefit of agriculture, which we use to create jobs for our young people. That is what we intend to do. So, we I mean, intend to... Ms. Ayana, just, uh, just a moment. I, I like to put you to task on some of these plans. And, and I mean, I like you to also be explicit and be specific to the people of Aquabom said in whom you are uh, seeking their, their votes. Uh, so I will, I, will, I will rephrase and I, will, I want us to dwell a bit more on my first question and have a background to it. Um, for example, uh, just about a few weeks ago, nine states out of the, oil, I mean, in the oil rich uh, states of the Federation, out of the 13% derivation uh, uh, formula funding, they got over 450 billion naira. So when I ask, well, how the, will the people of Aquaibom State feel the benefit of having oil being exploited, uh, explored in their backyard? This is one of the reasons why I'm asking. Those kind of funds are outside of perhaps the internally generated uh, and also the FAC, uh, the monthly money that the, the state government goes to the center to get. So this is uh, an additional money that goes into the hands of the oil-rich states in the Federation. Now, how do you hope to make these funds, for example, be of a benefit to the average man on the street of a Hwaibam state? By, by creating the facilities that we need, by supporting industries, by supporting the young people, by ensuring that we diversify our economy, with the funds that comes in, because it's not always going to come in. So we use the funding that, are, that that's coming in at this time to create um, the, the, the industries, to support growth, to support um, human capital development. What kind of industry that's are you talking way. about, Mr. Uh, Mr. Aino? What kind of industry, for example? Agri-based agri -based industries, we need to ensure that we create agri-based industries, we create um, pharmaceutical industries, and we're able to bring our people to work. We create, we, you, you really need to create things that your people will also use. And so as you, as you get this money, you study the economy, you, you create industries that will ensure that your people continue to have uh, the benefits for which they receive this money for. Because you also know, Shem, that this is not going to be there for all of the times. Now, I, I do know that uh, white-collar jobs are one of the main economic drivers uh, for the uh, for Aquabom State Government and its people. But I, I will dwell a bit on uh, the issue of the aquaculture. Uh, the state has immense potential in this regard. Give us an idea of an estimation of what you what you think this sector can bring to bear or can uh, can benefit the economy of Aquabum State. Right now, we have not even tapped into the aquaculture, and the blue economy is lying fallow. We have 
129 kilometers of seashore in Accra, Ibom, and you can see the riverine communities all through it. And so you invest in aquaculture, you invest in the blue economy. Those riverine communities, you begin to get fully full industries, canning industries, where they can derive the full potentials, put trawlers uh, uh, in those riverine areas, get them maritime security, which is really a problem right now, and then begin to fight piracy and make all of that area um, fully developed, put in tourism, um, build hotels and run the economy that can attract investors and can continuously make a bomb, a tourist destination, then that's where you are investing uh, in aquaculture. You are taking charge of the river, the fronts. You are using all of those to create wealth for the people of Aquaibom State. So now let, 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 let us get it. Uh, and I'll come to the Ibom air you mentioned earlier. Um, Give us an estimation. Just how many, how, how, how much of jobs can that create? How much of, uh, <laughs> if you have specific specific plans for aquaculture, uh, what, how much are you hoping should you be elected to invest in that area? How much do you think? Because you're going to be the CEO of that state, running the affairs of government. How much do you think that that sector can generate for the people of Aquabum State? If we invest fully and partner and run the proper, uh, which we intend to do with the private sector, you will be able to at least generate 20% of uh, employment, 20 to 30% of employment, and then move your people out of the streets and the young people. You'll be able to create uh, an atmosphere that's direct employment for and indirectly, you'll be able to create another 20% uh, with the aquaculture because tourism is part of it. Like I've told you, you need to use the beachfront very well and invest in those areas so people can make Aquaibom uh, a destination of choice. And these are the things you want to do when, as you get into office, we already have studies that we have done and we know uh, that we're going to go into all of some of these things, all of those areas, as we speak to you right now, we have an Ibom Solution Hub where uh, uh, we need to be able to bring in companies and industries and organizations that will want to work um, because of the area of infrastructure and the export process, pre processing zone facility uh, license that have been granted the state. These are all of the things we intend to do and make Aquaibom attractive to investors. Your, 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 I mean, your principal, I mean, the governor, uh, from about 10 billion naira uh, revenue from uh, about 2017 to um, uh, driven to about uh, 24 billion, and I'm, I understand that is is uh, hitting almost 30 billion uh, revenue now. What is your estimation? Uh, how much do you think you can take the internally generated revenue of Aquabon State should you be elected? It, first of all, before you run through the internally generated revenue, you've got to even create the jobs for the people. So I'm not, you, you're really not coming to tax the people because you want to create an internally generated revenue at all costs. You must understand that you're trying to grow your economy slowly. So you take it slowly and allow the people some space to come to, you know, after COVID, the economy is yet to fully recover. And so there's a lot of, there's a need to consistently at this point support uh, the small, medium scale enterprises. You need to create that, support them and grow with them. I, I don't believe that. Coming from the private sector, I can tell you that the, the people are already complaining of multiple taxation. So you've got to be able to deal with that, give them a breather, and grow the business with them. So I'm not really going to come in like, you know, standing with a rod, and I want to increase internally generated revenue. It's a process. You look at the laws, you look at what to do to help the people get back to work. 
then of course, as they get back to work, your internal generated revenue will grow. So you don't have a you don't have a plan in terms of whether you want to keep the same figure or you want to jack it up or you want to improve it. What I'm saying here is you need to get the people and your industries working first. You need to ensure that you are able to address some of the basic infrastructural uh, needs of the people before you begin to keep them on tax. You can keep it where it is with a plan to grow it when you put certain things in place. You don't generate revenue in a vacuum. There must be um, something that you put in place to help increase the, the, the revenue. Otherwise... So, so in the area of the EBOM air you mentioned, uh, EBOM air, I don't know how many aircrafts that, 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 that is using in their fleets right now, but what is your plan for EBOM air? Is one of uh, the investments uh, of the Aquabom state? Like I said to you at the beginning, Ibom Air is growing. Now they have about uh, nine aircraft. They're flying, I think, uh, seven rather, aircraft. And now we have ordered 10 new aircraft to come in. Delivery should start in 2023. And so the plan is to con gradually expand our operations and then begin to do the West Coast. When we begin to do the West Coast with the new international terminal building, then there's a brand new MRO that is about to be commissioned. Then we begin to attract other aircraft to stop over in Aquaibon for maintenance, and then we can even maintain our own aircraft in that MRO. Then we will expand to having a cargo terminal. That is a steady plan. Now, when you have a cargo is, is that is that a plan, uh, Mr. Aino? Is that a plan laid out by Governor Udom Emmanuel? And if if that is the case, what is your own vision? Because I mean, no, 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 no. The plan, the cargo terminal is our addition. I'm going to add our administration will add the cargo terminal. When you you like, I keep saying to you, Shem, we must grow steadily. There is a target. There is an uh, there is an assessment. You must be able to assess your plan and see your achieve, achievements, and then you move to the next level. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a gradual thing. And when you finish and then you, you take over, of course, naturally, once you begin to run the West Coast, there will be need for a cargo terminal. You cannot do so. We'll build a cargo terminal. And these are all the things we think that were strong, but the best airline in Nigeria today we can keep it up and we can keep expanding. And Aquaibom can now be seen as the home of uh, Nigeria's best airline. Now, so, so I and I, and I, if, you, if, if you look at it, uh, around the globe, uh, you look at uh, um, cities that, that, uh, that are home to some of uh, uh, the air airlines. Uh, you look at Etihad, you look at... Um, um, other cities across the globe, like uh, um, uh, 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 um, Lufthansa um, in Germany. I mean, the, the, the cities where they, they birth, most especially, the, 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 there is a way that it affects the economy of the city. And there Correct. is also a way that the city also benefits and they create some other economies around the airlines that help uh, not only that city, but the entire nation benefits from it. Now, the question is that your, uh, uh, the, the governor has the EBOM Air uh, agenda, he's put it in place. What is your own initiative? Should you be governor? How do you hope that EBOM Air and Uyo being a, top, a major hub for Ibom Air operation, and all of what you have said, what are the additional uh, part of the economy that you hope that that can also help to, 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 to stir up? With Ibom Air, you can increase your tourism potentials because you, you have yeah. the airline, mm -hmm. and so you are going to blow tourism. You're going to develop the 21 tourist sites that we have in this state. You're going to be able to bring people in, and then you're going to increase your 
hotels, you're going to, that's why I told you about developing uh, coastline areas, because you have an airline that people that can constantly grow the city, you begin to think of creating a downtown Uyo, where you can begin to see um, offices and businesses grow in that area and begin to segment the town into various parts because you have an airline. All you need, really, to get people to your destination that you want to build is the airline. And the airline is already in place. So why you now begin to develop all of this, and that is how you want to make Aquaibom a tourist destination uh, in the country. Because you have an airline on the one part, you have the tourist sites on the one part, you are going to ensure their security. And of course, you know Aquaibom is one of the most peaceful states in the country. We are going to continue to deepen that and ensure that people come here and they are safe staying here so that they can keep coming. As you do that, so you are expanding the economy. You are getting people to work. We are going to get into commercial agriculture, which is also part of tourism, if you like, because people will come, visit uh, uh, our, our plantations, look at um, all of the things that we're doing, and that's, that's how to begin to open up. So the airline itself is key to it. And if you're coming to a quiet so, so, so sorry, Mr. Musayano. So I'm 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 I'm, I'm, like, I'm trying to get something specific from you. Um, so I make example of what is happening in Dubai, and when you fly the airline that lands uh, in that city, when you fly right. Ethiopian airline. Um, uh, and you land in Addis, uh, there are things that happen in Addis that, that you know uh, that naturally uh, that, that helps uh, the economy of the state. When you fly Lufthansa and you land uh, in Frankfurt, you know what you've got to, uh, in Frankfurt. Uh, and these are direct uh, uh, money that people put into that economy. So I'm asking, what is specific? Within the first year, for example, that you hope that will be uh, an affiliate or uh, uh, an appendage of the airline economy that will help the general economy of Aquabum State. What is that? We have told you consistently that we will develop uh, tourism potential. No, but, but that's a generalized term. So I'm, I'm looking for a specific so that we can be able to hold you on to it. Should you no, be no, governor? No, no, no. Well, tourism tourism is, a, is, a, is a general word, and I can mention 20 things that are related to tourism. For example, you have to show you know, if, if you when you come into a quibble in the next two years, I should be able to drive you to tourist sites, I should be able to make you go around a quibble, see new developments in terms of tourism, in terms of industries that we are going to build. I'm going to make you see new businesses that have opened up in the states because of the airline. So you, there, there, these are things you sit down and you begin to uh, um, put in place gradually. There are going to be new hotels. Yeah, I'm going to create um, uh, a beach that is going to make you want to go to the beach. I'm going to make you have to go on a boat ride. I'm going to make you be able to go to um, the fish market. I'm going to make you yeah, these are all the things you want to begin to bring that people will love to come spend again in our city. All right. So let me ask you again. Um, in the League of the States, uh, of the Federation, what would you like our choir bomb to be notable for under you should do the elected governor? The cultural revolution, rural development, we want to be able to drive our economy and let the, the, the people in the rural development have the benefits because all of these industries we want to do will be uh, in the rural area. So we are going to open up that economy. What crop? No what, what crop? What crop are you looking at? What specific so, commodity are you looking at? We are good in cassava. We are good in palm. You know that Aquaibom is um, home to palm palm oil. You know that. And so we are going to expand on our palm oil processing in Aquaibom and try regain our pride of place. We are already revamping um, Aqua Palm, and we are going to expand on it and get our uh, PKO 
out and ensure that we keep expanding in that area. Palm oil is big, big, big business in this country. And so we tend to ensure, if you come to Aquaibo, you see palm fruits grow naturally. We're already working and we've got seedlings in as I speak. These were part of the programs I handled when I was in government in the agri uh, All right. So, yeah. So let, let's talk about the politics of this election. And just in the next few minutes that we have left on the program, uh, the election of uh, uh, the 25th of February has shown us that election in Nigeria is no longer the same. There, there could be all upset and surprises. And perhaps uh, there, there are those who believe that traditionally, Aquabom said, it's a PDP state. But if you look at the figures that came out of the election of the 25th of February, it's shown us that anything can happen. Uh, we are even hearing Labour Party could play an upset, the APC could play an upset. Even the YPP is a threat to the PDP in a quiet bomb state. Yes, yeah, so we believe that the PDP government has done extremely well in a quiet bomb. All Governments, all the developments you find today in Aquaibo since 1999 was done by the PDP government. And the, uh, the Kinodom Emmanuel, um, Emmanuel's led administration has put in place infrastructures in this state, opened up the roads and all of the things that he has done, the industries that he has put in place. And we believe that we are sufficiently positioned to continue. To, there is need for absolute continuity in this state to continue to build on the trajectory of development that we have had in our state, the roads and all of that. We intend to, so the PDP has gone out there, as I went around the 31 local government, I've done a needs assessment of the state and the local government. I know exactly what we need to put in place to ensure that we, we just seamlessly continue that trajectory of development. We know we need to give markets, roads, hospitals, and all of those things that is needed in the rural area. And again, continuity is important because um, every time you bring in a new government, the people, they are, there's, they are, there's bound to be a loss of the, the infrastructure. People will not want to continue in what has been going on. So who suffers? It is the people that suffers. We have maintained, you don't change a winning team. So this election, we believe we are going in with all our might. We don't take things for granted. So we campaign, we tell the people our plan. We have a plan that we share with the people and tell them how we are going to continue seamlessly in agricultural revolution, in rural development, infrastructure, maintenance and enhancement, security, which is key. People living in this state know what it used to be. The level of kidnapping, the level of killing. We, but since this administration came in, there's been peace. We intend to continue with right. education. We intend to continue with entrepreneurial development. We intend to support our small, medium-scale enterprises. We intend to ensure that our civil servants, are well, their welfare is paramount in our mind. All and right. we ensure that we... we, we we run with them, they are the engine of growth, pay their gratuity as that when due, pay the allowances as that when due, and pay their proportional yeah. areas as that when due. Yeah. 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 want to do. Thank you so much indeed, and I wish you the very best on Saturday at the polls. Thank you so much indeed Thank for the time. Thank you so much, Thank you for uh, Pastor Umar and all the PDP governorship candidates in Aquabom State speaking with us. Yes, now you, you heard from uh, the PDP governorship candidate in Akwai Bumstead. Let's now speak with the APC governorship candidate, Mr. Akan Udofia, who joins us live from Uyode, uh, uh, the Akwai Bumstead capital. Thank you so much, Mr. Udofia, for joining us tonight. Give us an understanding of the outcome of uh, today's uh, judgment from the Supreme Court. Maybe that's a good place for us to start. Um, thank you, Shil. Um for starters, it's with a deep sense of humility and responsibility that I welcome the verdict of the Supreme Court affirming me candidate of the All People's Progressive Congress in Aquaibom State, our great party. I have always never had a doubt 
over and above the sanctity of our courts. So um, I'm proud of the outcome, and I'm certain that the will of the people, the great people of Akwaibom State, has come to bear. Who gave me the mandate? So yeah, let's start from there. That's what it is. Fantastic. Um, uh, your, your, your ambition to, to wanting to become governor of the state uh, does not leave you alone yeah. in the arena. You are up against uh, some heavyweight in the race. Give us an understanding of uh, how do you see yourself in this race and perhaps what makes you think that you are the best man for the job? Well, you're just the one telling me now that um, I'm, I'm up and against uh, heavyweights. I am the best. I've been in the private sector for 32 years, commanding up to 2019, 4,000 plus employees. Between 2004 and 2014, I was the vice chairman of Saipem Contracting Nigeria Limited. In that period, we did $14.6 billion of turnover in Nigeria. And that was just one of my business interests. I've run a family business that is 50 years old this year, incorporated August 24th, 1973. Today in Desicon, post-COVID, about 2,600 employees have gracefully retired. My father's still alive. My mother's still alive. He, retired, he resigned 27 years ago. And so I've taken and I've accounted for the profit and loss of that business for the last 27 years, I have a rich culture of success, a rich culture of delivery. That's the difference between me and the rest. And I'm living my dream, I'm living my vision. Uh, is that the reason why you are better than the lot, the rest? Absolutely, I have delivered. I'm a man, when we, when we took over the business of uh, Desicon, it was a one, about a $100,000 business per annum turnover. When I resigned to join politics in 2021, I'd taken the revenues to about $860 million per annum turnover. Hmm. So, I mean, because there are others, I spoke with your counterpart of the PDP earlier, uh, who says that he has a huge record, a profile, uh, of working in the private sector, and he's had some governance uh, experience in working in government. But have you had that kind of a, a mix of experience, private sector, because government, the workings of government and private sector running are two different uh, I mean, the kind of uh, endeavors altogether. Knowing how to run public service and knowing how to run government is a different kettle of fish altogether. I, I agree with you, but predominantly, both sectors about the same, private, public, they all have stakeholders. You have stakeholders in the public, you have stakeholders in the private. I've also been on boards of various government uh, parastatals and government initiatives. In Aquaibom State, I was on the board of the Foreign Direct Investment um, for some years. So I'm used to commanding and I'm used to managing men and resources. The difference, like I said, is about public and private, but you're managing men and resources and the various interests. So, why then do you want to be a Bomb governor? You know, have you been to a Bomb state in the last uh, couple of years? Yes, I've been to a Bomb. I've slept in Uyo. I've gone, come to work in a Bomb state before. Yes, so I have. Thank you. Thank you. Have you seen the level of mismanagement there? So you are switching no, the roles now. No, I'm supposed to be asking a question. So <laughs> don't let me indulge you further in answering the question. You, you are, are the one that are supposed to be asking, I mean, answering the question. So why do you want to become governor? Okay. I need to change the fortunes of my people. I need to take Aquaibum back to the map, I mean, to the world map. Aquaibum is the second most indebted state. Aquaibum is the third um, oil producing in Nigeria. But yet, the second most indebted, nothing is going on in Aquaibum State. I came out with a mantra saying shared prosperity. There's nothing in Aquaibum that leads you to any prosperity. There's not one single road in Aquaibum that when you get into your car in point A and go to point B, that will give you hope. And I challenge anybody, forget grandstanding, forget all the big talk. 
Google is your friend. All of what I'm going to say to you, I'm going to say from a background of active achievement. I'm not preaching anything I've not done before. So when somebody comes and says he can do this, he can, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying I have done this and I want to do this. I still remain the largest philanthropist in the history of Aquaibum State. And I've done it with my private, private funds. I've now worked for government in any other capacity other than advising. So, uh, uh, nothing is going on in Aquaibum State. The Exxon Mobil is gone. There's nothing. Tomorrow they talk about syringe. They talk about uh, um, Ibo Air. How many people does Ibo Air uh, employ? How many aircrafts are flying? How many in the air? That's why I want to be governor of Akwaibu State. So you don't think Ibo I come from a rich so, 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 Mr. Odofia, you don't think Obama Air is an achievement for the people of Akwaibu State? It's marginal. I don't know what you call achievement. I've been in the aviation industry for at least 13, 14 years. Ibom Air was muted between myself and Godzilla Kwabi in 2007. And so when I tell you con with all conviction that I've been in the industry, I know what I'm talking about. I trained the first female pilot in Akwaibom State. I've owned the jet for 14 years. I know what it is to keep those aircrafts in the air. Besides refining, aviation industry is the biggest loss-making industry in the world. And the only way you can make it happen, break even, those aircrafts must be in the air. I want somebody to tell me where they are flying to. I want them to show me that they are airpiece. When we talk about Ibom Air, it's, it's just a means of transportation. I don't think it's a means of any kind of prosperity for anybody. So, I mean, should you be governor of Aqua Bombstead today, what would you do to that uh, endeavor? Of course, I'm going to go public and pri public private uh, partnership. <laughs> the business of government is not to be running an airplane. I mean, running an airline. <laughs> That's my business. I'm going to focus on millennial, millennial goals, sustainable development goals. That's my responsibility as a government. I have no interest in, in, in uh, marginal businesses. I will create an enabling environment for businessmen to come and run in air. That's their business, not my business. My business is to grow my people. That's what we're talking about. So, so clarify, uh, you said you between you and Senator Gazwe Akwabio was the idea of e -bomb here. Are you saying that you were the originator of that concept of e -bomb here? Uh, uh, absolutely. Please go to CAC. You see, Ibom Air was incorporated in 2008. Ibom Air is not today. Yeah. It was an idea that you muted yourself and Senator Gazwe Fabio, but it was brought to life by Governor Udomi Manuel. That's right. Absolutely. It became operational in his time. So, but, but was there any investment uh, made into Ibom Air at those times that you muted it? No, absolutely. For, for, for starters, the incorporation was an investment, but, but at the time, he then went on to train, I think, about 20 Aquaibum indigents for air traffic control, you know, in preparation for this. So, yes, I mean, as a minimum, that was a basic investment at the time. So, with your experience, let me ask you, what do you think yeah. is Aquaibum people's most, uh, uh, I mean, let, let, let me make it a, a, a bit more friendly, uh, friendlier to the years of the average person in Aquaibum said. What would you say is the problem of the average Aquaibum man or woman? Unemployment. And what, and what and rate is that? employed in the at, past. Okay. At what rate is that? And <laughs> what, what are you hoping to do with that, uh, with that predicament should you be governor? Like I said, I've come from a background of private sector background, construction and enterprise. So by the time by the time I become a governor, which I will be come March 12th or just shortly after, one of the most thing, one of the most urgent things, because everything in Aquarium has to be very urgent at this time, is going to be sustainable development goals, clean water, clean health, well-being, um, education, decent work, economic growth, you know, a ton of things. Today, in Aquaibum State, like I said earlier on, the level of unemployment is, is, is out of this world. And I think the last time I saw it, it was at about 40-something percent. 
We have to correct it. How are we going to correct it? Vibrant, very vibrant economy. How are we going to have a vibrant economy? There are tons and tons of things, tons and tons of projects out there that we could have done. In 2007, I trained 160, 200, I mean, sorry, 80 Akwaibom indigents, and then in 2008, another 80, 160, in preparation for the Baka Deep Sea port. And at the time, we were looking that Nigeria was going to build about 13 FPS homes. At the time, the investment was about $2.1 um, $2 billion. And an average FPS will cost you about 20, 30 odd billion dollars. I did this to train Aquagum indigents. Fast forward, 16 years after Ibaka, Deep Sea Port has not been actualized. Lagos State started the Lekki Deep Sea Port. And guess what it is? Four years after they've commissioned and gone. We have to be intentional around all we're talking about. Even agriculture, we're talking of um, infrastructure here in this instance now. Agriculture is not about going to farm. I'm not talking about farm. We have to create the infrastructure. And when I talk about the infrastructure, it's even down to the roads, such that the woman who is in the hinterland can bring her eggs to the road to go and sell, so that these eggs don't break between the, the hinterland. So axial roads we're going to develop. We have to create connectivity around the sectors in Aquaibo State to generate the kind of development we're talking about. Everything in Aquaibo State at this level is going to be very urgent, very, very urgent. So there was, a, contest, there was a contestation, Mr. Odofia, between the, uh, the NBS, the Niger, uh, Bureau, uh, National Bureau of Statistics, and the Aquaibo State Governor, when uh, government, when the unemployment statistics were put over, uh, above 51 percent, um, in reality, in the very first year, to drive down this rate, how many jobs do you think you can generate? Uh, with, um, what I'm looking at currently, which primarily is, first of all, human capital development, is that we are looking to create at least a minimum of between um, 5,000 to 10,000 um, 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 jobs. How are we going to do that? We have three major projects, including making sure, and I guarantee Aquaibo Indigenous, my name is Obama Kanudofia, I will make sure that Aquaibo government will ensure that Ibo Airport will become a truly functional international airport. That alone will connect the rest of the sectors we're talking about, whether you're talking about tourism, medical tourism, or entertainment tourism, you're talking about uh, works, you're talking about um, agriculture, anything. Just the mere fact that I'm telling Aquaibon people today that I'll make Aquaibon International Airport an international airport. And it's about a conversation with the federal government. And I thank God that today the federal government, the indication is, without a doubt, that APC will control the federal government. And so I'm going to connect Aquaibon to national politics. And I'm going to make sure that my people in Abuja will understand that I need that international airport. I need to create a linkage around everything we're talking, including the Ibom Air. That whoever comes to buy or run Ibom Air will see reason to do that because he can evacuate All whatever right. he brings. Aquaibon is landlocked. So, you, cannot, you cannot distribute anything that comes there. Mm. So, I mean, there's a lot of reliance on uh, government and white collar jobs. Um, there, there's a whole lot of uh, reliance in that sector, and it's perhaps one of the main economic drivers in Aquaibom State. But immediately, you've talk, talked about um, the issue of uh, the airport and how much of jobs that you can generate. Uh, aquaculture is another area which I uh, dealt with with the PDP candidate. Uh, that is one heritage that the people of Aquaibom State are proud to talk about when they call, talk about the local economy. How much of that can you turn around? And what is your estimation in terms of the benefit that it will accrue to the Aquaibom State uh, coffers? Um, as for numbers, because these PDP people, they know how to copy. Uh, I'm not going to say what the numbers are. But I'm going to say what we're going to do. When you talk about the aquaculture, I heard um, our PDP candidate says 129 kilometers of uh, uh, waterfront. 
actually it's not 129, it's 149, 20 of which in Ibno has been degraded environmental exploitation, oil and gas exploitation. So we have 129. We're talking of Ibaka, the deep sea port. Today, the deep sea port, we're talking about oil and gas. Yeah, you know that fossil fuels are a thing of the past. So I'm no more talking about Ibaka as a deep sea port. I'm talking about Ibaka as a maritime hub. I'm talking about as Ibaka as a logistics hub to service the entire Gulf of Guinea. Now, your que back to your question, how many jobs will it create? When you land in uh, Obamata Airport, there was supposed to be an underground bypass to Oron, which is about a 15, 20 minutes drive from the airport to Oron. Now, Oron, I would say, is the, for want of a better word, the epicenter, the center of the quarter about 20 something kilometers of waterfront. All of all the tourism, the hotels, and the rest. We will relocate from Uyo. There's no need keeping hotels. We need to expand outside Uyo. The environment is already saturated there. We are going into fishing. We're going to agriculture. We're going into fishing, trawlers, I mean, trawling and everything. You come to Ibaka today, you see Chinese trawlers everywhere. They never come in. They just take the fish and they go. We are you, are you going to make it a state-owned state like state, Are you going to make it a state-owned investment? You will have a, a fish... Uh, uh, farming that is state-owned, or what exactly are you planning to do? My business, like I said, is to create an environment as a government and a governor. Everything we're going to do is public-private partnership. It's not my business to own a fish farm or the rest. If that's my business, then I would. But to achieve this, to protect the government and my people, we will give local government autonomy. We're going to return local government autonomy to Akwaibom State. And we're going to have a working document that will tell you how to work in Akwaibom and how not to work. And it's going to be a tripartite uh, document. All right. Federal, Quickly, I mean, state uh, yeah. government, third party, and local government. Quickly. And you know why you want to do that? So that the grassroots, the people that democracy is about, it will get to them. We're not going to sit down in EU and adjudicate over the affairs of people in a get or run or anything. Local government autonomy for growth purposes, development purposes, must must be institutionalized in the first instance. Yeah. With uh, over 450 billion naira going to nine states and the 13% uh, derivation funds just in February this year, just about a few weeks ago, a few days ago this year, how do you hope that you can utilize this money for the benefit of the average person in a quiet bomb state, should you be governor, 13% derivation fund, oil money. How can your people be beneficial, uh, be beneficiary of this kind of fund? And they want to see it in tangible form. Um, let's get it straight first. 400 and something, I don't know how much is coming. But I can tell you the debt profile of Aquaibo State is about 200 and something. So when you say 400 and something, I think you're misrepresenting it. When to they nine, listen to outside, nine they states. Say, oh, 450 billion went to nine I, states, I, including Aquaibo State. Yes. Now, I agree. You're going to you're going to deduct the debt profile of the nine states, including Aquaibo State. So whatever is coming, very likely we'll be looking to service debt. So let's not misinform people. The PDP government in the last how many years are 220 billion as of today, debt profile. So we'll first of all be a responsible government to service that debt. And then we'll start now looking how to correct and how to fix things. One of the easiest things that I see today is environmental. There's so much of environmental degradation and somebody has got to fix it. A conversation has to be held around fixing the environment. And you know the greener you are, the wealthier you're going to be going forward. That's where the world order is today. I'm going to seek for partnerships around the world, sourcing funds here and there. The greener I am. So it is very important that we do not depend on this so-called um, intervention, 400 and something, whatever comes to Aquabo. No. Let's try to protect our environment first. The people that I'm addressing know who I'm talking to. When they came to Aquabo 50, 60 years ago, they saw it in pristine state. 
this man coming in here is going to protect whatever is acquired books. All right. On a final note. Whoever has done Yeah. Okay. So, Ms. Zodofia, on a final note, PDP, uh, PDP is saying, as uh, Akwaibom is saying, as a traditional PDP state. PDP has governed that state perhaps from the inception. Now, um, APC uh, is perhaps not having a very good run over the last few years in the state. It's had its troubled times internally and externally uh, within the politics of Akwaibom state. How do you hope to win that election in that climate, considering what happened in the last election? Where are the figures coming from? Where are the votes coming from for you? First of all, you have to consider the product. You have to consider the product in APC and the product in PDP. I'm a known content in Aquabum State. Today, PDP has been thoroughly battered. You saw the outcome of our results. Today, you have a deliberate, deliberate effort by Aquabumites to correct the mismanagement evident in Aquabum in the last eight years. I don't have to lift a finger. My people are going to vote for me. They saw what happened last weekend. We will teach them a lesson coming this weekend. PDP is a, is, is a gun party. All I right. promise you, I'm sending this message to thousands of Nigerians. PDP is finished in Aquaibon State. My people deserve way better than what they're getting. Absolutely. Mr. Akan Udofia, APC governorship yes. candidate in Aquaibon State. Thank you so much indeed for your time. And I wish you the very best in the March 11 post. Thank you so much indeed. Thank you very much. God bless you. I appreciate bless Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you. Well, then, uh, we reported to you earlier that the Supreme Court affirmed Akanimo Udafia as the authentic flag bearer of the All Progressive Congress in Aquabum State uh, for the ticket of the party as it dismissed the suit uh, filed by Senator Ita Enang seeking to nullify the primaries that produced Mr. Udafia. Uh, Jesse Kudera Kekirakun was the one who delivered a judgment and upheld the, de upheld the decision of the Court of Appeal Abuja, which held that the Federal High Court in New York acted without jurisdiction when it nullified the APC's primary election. And I'm being joined tonight by the man who went to court over that matter. Senator Ita Enang joins us live here in our Abuja studio. Thank you so much, distinguished, for joining us tonight. Um, how does the judgment come to you? For you, is it a settled matter? You want to move on now? It's, um, very, it's very unfortunate that there can be this level of discussion about the judgment of a court. I am very shocked, and I have taken this matter to the National Broadcasting Commission, NBC. Akanimo Odofia, my brother, who has just spoken, is not the candidate of APC in Akwaibun State. If anybody wants to know who is the candidate of APC, let him just check our INEC portal now. On the, that is, as to the governorship candidates of the party, you will see on the, on the space of APC that it is dash, dash, that there is no candidate. Now, I took the case, the case at the Supreme Court today was decided in my favor and against Akanodofia. It was decided in my favor and against Akanodofia. The, court of, the Federal High Court decided that the, they should, the party should conduct another primaries, one, and that Akanodofia should not participate in the primaries, him not being a member of the party, and that I am the member of the party and I or others could participate in that prim should participate in that primaries without Akanodofia. On the basis of that, Mr. Akanodofia, Obama Akanodofia, appealed to the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal, um, William Daudu, J.C. presiding, decided that the, court of, the Federal High Court had no jurisdiction because the writ was not endorsed for service outside, out of jurisdiction, because it was issued in New York to be served on APC and INEC in Abuja, and the court held that the, under the Sheriff and Civil Process Act, Section 97 and 98, that the writ ought to have been endorsed, that it is issued out of jurisdiction. That was the main case that the Court of Appeal decided, and that on account of that, it has set aside the judgment of the Federal High Court, and now took the matter to the Court of Appeal, I mean to the Supreme Court. 
two issues were argued at the, as main issues at the, at the Supreme Court. One, that the court, the Federal High Court has jurisdiction because the Sheriff and Civil Process Act does not apply to the Federal High Court, and that the Federal High Court is one jurisdiction, has one jurisdiction sitting in different uh, judicial divisions for administrative purposes. Now, the, court, the Supreme Court today ruled in my favor and said that, that the position of the Court of Appeal is wrong, and it set aside that judgment of the Court of Appeal. In fact, just one paragraph, one paragraph of the uh, judgment of the Court of Appeal, which the court has set aside today, he said the, the judgment of uh, Mohammed Baba Idris, Justice Court of Appeal, on page 92 of the judgment says, flowing from the foregoing authority, therefore, and in view of the consideration of the issues in both this instant appeal and the sister appeal, wherein I have already held that the originating summons at the lower court, having not complied with the provisions of section 97 and 98 of the Sheriff and Civil Process Act, the lower court wrongly assumed jurisdiction, and so this appeal succeeds. Another is made striking out suit number that filed at the lower court, and his judgment of 14th November, having been delivered without jurisdiction, is accordingly set aside. This is the judgment of the Court of Appeal, which uh, Obama Kanemo Odofia then said, they issued the same relief they have issued now, that the Court of Appeal has all asked the, his name to be sent to INEC, and they circulated all over the world. And I brought the judgment of the court and the court order, and circulated everybody but everywhere. You, but you do not have the judgment, the verdict of the Supreme Court. I have the judgment. It's, not, the, it's the, not ready yet. It's not ready yet, but by tomorrow it's going to be out, or next tomorrow it's okay. going to be out. So what that judgment has said mm. is that I lost on one leg because I said in the nomination or the process of choosing a candidate which we are going to go for, that Akanemo Rafia should not be allowed to participate because he cannot participate in PDP nomination on the 25th and the following day he comes to participate in our nomination in APC, that he cannot. And I also say that the court should say that he is a, he's not a member of APC. But the court said, the Court of Appeal said that it is an internal affair of the party. And the Supreme Court agreed today that it is an internal of the affairs of the party. And it held in my case that Akanemo Udofia, the, the waiver is a granted Akanemo is a, a member of the party. That is the only thing he has won. Oh. So from today, he has become a member of the party. But they have misinterpreted it to say that the court has said that he is a candidate of the party. He's not a candidate of the party. No, um, it's the contention over the ticket of the APC in Aquabom State. Senator Etayan Angu is the one who has gone to court, to, from the Court of Appeal, he's gone to Supreme Court. But there is the contention of what exactly is the position of the Supreme Court. Um, so let me allow you to listen to the lawyer who spoke to, to us after the judgment today. Take a listen to the lawyer and allow Senator Etayan Angu to respond to it. The Supreme Court just dismissed uh, the appeal by Senator Ita Enang now and declared that the issues he raised, which borders on membership of political parties and waiver, is a domestic affair of the party. It was the basis upon which the court dismissed his appeal and affirmed the judgment of the lower court, that's the court of appeal. So by that, Akanemo is the candidate of the APC in River State, in the uh, Aquaibom State. Yes, the APC governorship candidate in Aquaibom State is Akanimo Asupo Odofia. Why is your position different from that? I mean, that's, you were not a counsel in that because it's your matter. You were not, uh, you, you, you didn't represent yourself. But why is the account of that lawyer different from your own account today or your own interpretation from what the media is reporting though? Now, I agree with him. There were two issues. One that the judgment that the court, Supreme Court, should affirm the judgment of the Federal High Court and set aside the judgment of the Court of Appeal. Now, the, court, the Supreme Court set aside the judgment of the Court of Appeal, the one that said that the Federal High Court, that the, the Federal High Court had no jurisdiction. The Supreme Court set aside that judgment, that section. But the area that said that a waiver was granted, which he said, the Supreme Court did not agree with me. The Supreme Court said it is an internal and domestic offense of the party, like what he had said, and that he is a member of the party. 
That does not make him the candidate of the party. So you disagree on that note? At Your own uh, is an interpretation issue. He says, based on that fact, Akanemo Udofia is a candidate of the APC. It was not one of the issues before the court as to who is the candidate. It is as to who is the candidate. But by in inference, even... can you infer based on the inferred. position it of the Supreme Court? It cannot be inferred. So, okay, so because that again is one thing that uh, your your party and and the other side need to you know yes. trash out. Yes. So uh, and INEC and uh, your party need to decide. Yes. So but your position is that there is no candidate of the APC in Akwaibom State. APC is that your position? As at this evening, mm -hmm. as at this evening and at this moment. And if you go on the INEC site, you will see that for governorship and deputy governorship, you have candidates of all other political parties. But on the space of APC, it is dash, dash. Because from the beginning, from 29th of May, from 27th of May last year, or 28th and 29th, when this issue happened, I had raised that. What we've done will not produce a candidate. And INEC came and wrote that what we did cannot produce a candidate. And that was why I went to court, you know, so that but, the court should order. But Senator, nomination. If in, in all of this, there is a, a possibility of a jeopardy. It's three days to the election yeah. now. It does look like your party might go into that election based on your own stand, uh, stance without a candidate. All I have said is that if the election holds... This Saturday, the 11th, anybody, when you go to vote, if you see APC on the ballot, please vote for the party. That means, because it is only a candidate, a party that has a candidate that is contesting the election. And it has been validated yes. in, the, in the Supreme Court yes. judgment. Uh, in, yes. In, if, you uh, don't have in a candidate, matter, yeah, so. if you don't have a candidate, that means you are not contesting the election. And so you may not be on the ballot. Have you reached Unless out to your party on this matter? I'm reaching out to the party. Officially, yes. on, on this matter. Yes. Why do, I've written, why do I have mean, written 11 you, letters to the party on this matter. Why is it that they're not listening to you? I've written 11 letters to, this matter, to, the, to the party on this matter. And immediately I got the judgment of the Court of Appeal, of the, of the Federal High Court. I went to have a meeting with myself and the national chairman and the legal, national legal advisor. And I requested that at least let us conduct nomination, which was ordered on the 14th of November. They told me that there is an application, there is an appeal. I said, an appeal does not execute as a state of execution. We can still conduct the nomination. Whoever emerges, we file candidates. But at this stage it is, we don't, we, we don't have any candidate filed. And if we don't do it, it may be too close to election, and we will not have a candidate. Senator, so we, I've been reaching yeah. 11 letters, yeah. and I'm going to make another approach to them, at least bringing the court order Sen tomorrow. Senator. But as of today, neither myself, no Akanemo Rafia, no any person is on the is on INEC and no court order mm. other than no court order that anybody should be made a, we're, a candidate. We're, we're out of time. Yeah, we're out of time, Senator we, we we Enang. Thank you. And I'll allow you a thirty a thirty seconds uh, final word. Uh, I assume that Senator Apabio is the leader of your party in your state. Go ahead. No, no, I'm asking easy. Yes. Perhaps the most senior member of your party yes. uh, in your state. Yes. Why? On which side is he? Are you on his side or is on the side of Akani Dofia? I wouldn't. I wouldn't go, want to go there. Is I he on your side though? I wouldn't want to go there. So he's not on your side. I wouldn't want to go there. Why is he in so much trouble in your party though? Because people like us who started struggling for the party since 2014. 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019, and laid foundation for the party to be a, a, blood, a blossoming, uh, attractive party, which made people leave PDP and all that, and came in to join us and built up. Now, those who came in wanted to get some of the people out. Right. And they have gotten so many people out. Very many responsible people had left the party, and left the going? party yeah. only with mm -hmm. its shell. Thank so you. unless we rebuild the party, we will still have this situation. Yes. I wish you the very but best. APC for today and at the judgment of today right. did not confer candidacy on any person. We hope that I will be able to. With the statement that has been made by the learned senior advocate. L lawyers always disagree on so many yes, things. Thank yes. you so much, Editor Itayanang, for your position tonight. And that's our show for today, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. I'm Shumaki Malay. God bless Nigeria. <laughs>